This is the story of George Stinney. Uh, he was just 14 years old when he was taken by the authorities and charged with a crime. They said that he had killed 11-year-old Betty June Binnaker and 8-year-old Mary Emma Thames. This was back in the year 1944. Now, it turns out he did not do any of those things, and just yesterday he was exonerated. Finally, the state of South Carolina said he didn't do it. We should not have convicted him. But they didn't just convict him, they executed him. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, unfortunately, about how that happened, because it's important that you know uh, what happened in this country and the remnants of that culture and that history. So first, let's show you, George. Uh, you got to understand the context here. He was just 90 pounds. He was 5 feet 2. He was 14 years old. They claimed that he uh, killed those girls and threw them in a ditch and that he had the capability of doing this. Now, did they have any evidence on him? Well, they had three cops uh, who said he did it and said that he confessed to it. Did they have any witnesses? No. Did they have any physical evidence? No. Did the cops write down the confession at the time? No. Were there any blacks on the jury in South Carolina back in 1944? No. They had uh, a law at the time that said you had to be a voter to be on a jury. But blacks weren't allowed to vote, so they weren't allowed to be on juries. In fact, almost no one there was black at all in the courtroom. Uh, 81 days after he was arrested and charged with this, they brought him to trial. The trial lasted about two and a half hours, during which his white defense attorney, who had not worked a criminal case before and who was going to be running for political office and needed votes in that area, did not present a single defense witness outside of Stinney. He didn't even cross-examine the police. <laughs> Stinney says that he never confessed. Well, now we know he didn't do the crime. <laughs> the police bring no evidence except they say, yeah, trust us. He confessed earlier. No cross-examination. The trial lasted two and a half hours. The jury took 10 minutes to convict him. And then he was led uh, to death row in uh, Clarendon County, South Carolina. We actually have a picture of him being led to death row. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, he was carrying a Bible. By the way, just if you're not absolutely clear yet uh, that he didn't do it, uh, historian in 2004 took this case on and uh, investigated it further and found out that there was a wealthy white family in the area who said that the real culprit did a deathbed confession and said that he had killed the two young girls. And a member of that family was part of the process that picked Stinney as the real culprit. It's impossible to know now, looking back 70 years, who knew and didn't know what exactly happened. Really, they were sure that this 14-year-old had done it, this 90-pound 14-year-old. Did they care that someone else had done it and was going to get away with the murders? They didn't care. They strapped him into Old Sparky. That's literally what the electric chair in South Carolina was called. And then... Just as the story is horrible, it's about to get worse. Since he was so young, uh, they couldn't strap him in right. They took the Bible he was carrying and made him use it as a booster seat. And then Joy James, an author, writes, the mask covering his face slipped off because the mask didn't fit. It was an adult's mask, revealing his wide open, tearful eyes and saliva coming from his mouth. The first jolt had, had not worked. After two more jolts of electricity, the boy was dead. His family was not at the execution. His family was not at the trial. Why? Because they told the family, if you don't leave town immediately, we're going to lynch you all. You want to talk about terror. You know, we talk about terrorism today in America. This was true terror. And they weren't there for their 14-year-old boy. 
The Associated Press says the rest of the family didn't see the teen again until his funeral when Stinney's body, burned from the electric chair, was put in an open casket. South Carolina has executed 289 people in the 20th century, and 82% of them were black, according to the Death Penalty Information Center. This legacy is not just about George Stinney and what was done to him. Now, finally, the state of South Carolina says they were wrong. He didn't do it. <sighs> that legacy continues to this day. Do you know that there were seven death penalty exonerations? Not in 1944. Today, in the year 2014. Seven people who were set to be executed, and it turned out they didn't do it. Let me show you the pictures of those seven folks. Yep, six out of the seven just happened to be African American. History rains down on us through the generations. This is not over. In fact, for those guys who were on death row, it took on average 30 years to clear their names. 30 years they sat on death row when they were perfectly innocent. George Stinney was also perfectly innocent, but they needed a scapegoat. And in this country, especially in the South, when they needed a scapegoat, you always knew where they were going to turn. Doesn't mean things haven't gotten better, but we're certainly not at the end of that process. And we've all got to learn from this and work together to make a better system that works for all of us so that we can all proudly call it our justice system. We're not there yet.